The theme today is the power of muscle activation. And uh, yesterday we were talking a little bit about it, and so I decided to do a, a theme class, just a little bit around it. This is going to be very different than anything you guys have ever done. So it's akin to um, maybe some things you've done, but probably never pieced together like this before. And what we're looking at doing really is starting to isolate major muscle systems of the body. And to understand why so many of us are in pain, you know, physical pain, not mental pain. <laughs> That's another story. But physical pain is because our, there's muscles that are being overtaxed to compensate for work that the big muscles should be doing. One of those muscles is the glutes. And so it's, it's very interesting, anatomically speaking, where the glutes sit, the buttocks, so many muscles in the body actually intersect at that point. So one of the things that I throw in pretty much every single yoga class now is glute strengthening, um, just to get people more stable. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion, and just going to put a, something to put a pin in uh, for future reference, but... There's a lot of discussion, how much should we focus on the physical? How much should we focus on the physical body in yoga? And kind of two things to consider. One is that in the Hatha Yoga tradition, the gateway to enlightenment in the Hatha Yoga tradition is through the body. And, and so it kind of ties into classical yoga that says that in order for us to experience enlightenment, we need to get stable. And this word stability is like, it's a huge idea. It's not just on one little thing. <laughs> what Patanjali is really saying is stability in the mind. That until we get stable in the mind, we're never going to experience enlightenment. Um, my teacher, PRT, says that a confused mind is unfit for the practice of yoga. And there's a lot of confused minds out there. And when we think about, just by the way, just to kind of classify or say what yoga is, yoga is the state of feeling completely at rest within yourself, completely at peace, completely at home. Sutra 1.3, that is the promise of yoga. And so what really fascinates me about muscle activation as I'm turning 49 is that realizing that... <laughs> that if I don't have a strong body, I'm never going to be able to focus on other higher aspects. If I'm in pain in my body, I'm never going to be motivated or be inspired or have the energy to pursue life's higher purposes. I've seen it time and time again when people are sick, physically sick, that they just don't have the energy to focus on their spiritual health. What are they focused on? trying to remove pain. And so I'm on a huge mission to help more people eliminate pain. The problem, one of the problems with this work <laughs> is that people that are not in pain go, oh, I don't really need to do that. <laughs> but we do eventually deteriorate. And one of the ideas, at least according to Greg, a muscle activation school, muscle activation technique school, is that aging really is a sign of muscle deterioration, of muscles not functioning correctly. Um, he's pretty adamant that if we want to stay young, keep the muscles working. If you want to stay young, keep the muscles working. And so we can maybe not turn back the clock here, <laughs> but we definitely can you know, be stronger in our bodies. So, having said that, I wanted to demonstrate or show you guys something really quickly. I do need a volunteer. I need a volunteer to lie down, uh, face down. So, can I get a volunteer? <laughs> Tracy? Thank you. Face down. Yeah, come in face down. So, this is a really kind of cool thing to show people because it's very, it's usually dramatic. And I always preface this kind of experiment saying, I really don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I have an idea of what's going to happen, but I also don't really know. So um, it's, um, 
For the purpose of the camera, I'm gonna get her to do this leg and then I'm going to do something which in a direction I shouldn't be doing, but it's for the camera. So bend this, bend this knee and engage, no, uh, uh, uh. Engage, you guys might wanna stand and see this because it's quite, I, I want you guys to see something. Just kind of stand a little, you can come on up here, just stand a little to the sides, but right away, just do what you were gonna do. Just lift this up, okay. Do you see what's going on in the pelvis? So there's like, she's trying to compensate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my, may I put my hand here? Okay. And then start to, first of all, engage this glute. And then start to lift this leg up. Do you see how much that is? That's mm -hmm. not a lot, okay. So remember yesterday we were talking and I said, Girl, you gotta get your glutes activated. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in, I'm actually gonna come around here and I'll do it this direction. Relax your leg for a second. So I'm going to just come in and activate this. I'm gonna palpate it. So in MAT, we learn how to palpate it. Now, obviously in a yoga class, we're not gonna have the teacher going around and palpating us. So what we're gonna do is isometrically start to get this muscle fired up. Now, is Tracy's glutes weak? <clears throat> There's kind of two ways to answer that. She was a dancer, so she's probably, you know, strong in the glutes. You know, she's definitely has a history of using her glutes. I can feel it, it's somewhat toned, so it tells me that it's kind of strong. And but what's happened is because of stress, because of life, because of age, because of a variety of things, maybe even something going on, probably most likely something going on in the spine, that the connection, the muscle, um, uh, the connection, the communication connection between the brain and the glute is stopped. It's not functioning, it's not working. So all we're trying to do is improve that connection. And that's one of the reasons why I love MAT so much is it ties so well into yoga. What is yoga about? Mind-body connection. So, <clears throat> so the fibers of the glutes is just kind of interesting. The fibers of the glutes come down to the lateral epicondyle of the femur and into the tubercle of the tibia. And it's kind of interesting. Like, think about the fibers of the glutes come all the way down here. What is one of the number one complaints people have besides lower back? <laughs> Knee pain. Hmm. Is any lights going off for you guys yet? <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. I don't know. We'll see. But bend this knee. Okay, engage this glute. Holy Hannah. Okay, and then start to lift up. I'm not doing anything. You see the difference? Is that dramatic? Okay, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> so when <laughs> you lifted your knee up about four or five more inches. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it this side, just really quickly. Bend this knee, engage this glute, relax, engage this glute, and now I'll start to lift up. Do you see the difference? You guys see the difference? So. What we can do is, and this is a really good exercise for you guys to do on your own, this really targets the glutes. No, I'm serious. And some of you are sitting a lot. Um, you know, try to use a stand, standing table or, you know, get up every 30 minutes, walk around. But every day, start to put this into your program of doing this kind of glute exercise. It's very simple. Just relax first. So it's really important in between that you come back to relaxation. Because what we're doing is we're, we're trying to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system. There is where the communication relays are strengthened. If we're in this kind of stressful state, in this anxious state, or like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna lift it up and I'm clenching to lift up that leg, it doesn't have the same effect. So we need to be really relaxed and then just gently engage this glute and then lift the leg up. Now, just hold it there. One, two, three, nope, stay there. Four, five, six, and relax down. And relax the leg. Okay, I usually like just come back. 
and then bend the uh, knee, engage the glute, and lift up. You see it's getting better. Do you get, feel it getting stronger? And relax down. Yeah, every time it will feel different. Now, we're not going for broke here. We're not trying to go, you know, push it up as high as you can. In fact, in MAT, we always say less is more. It says it only needs 10% effort, 10% isometric effort. So that's something to th always think about because sometimes Mr. Hamstring will start to take over if you're trying too hard. Hamstrings are hip extensors. So if you do feel the hamstring take over, relax for a moment, come back, engage the glute, and then just lift it up a little bit this time. Two, three, four, five, six, and relax down. Relax the leg. We're going to do it three more times. A little bit faster, though, this time. And engage the glute. Good. This one's relaxed. This one's engaged. That's good. You're differentiating them already. And then lift it up just a little. Just a little. Two, three, four, five, six. Relax. And then one last time. Engage the glute. Lift it up. Good. Two, three, four, five, six. And relax. So we'll just test one more time and see how much range of motion we got. So lift it up, engage, lift up. Wow. Okay? So it already improved. Now, the thing about doing MAT, if you ever get the opportunity to see someone who can palpate you, it's like very specific. It's very, very, very specific. This is not as specific. So lift this leg up. So as we're lifting up, she's almost trying to compensate using her back muscles. She's trying to compensate using her hamstrings. Not a bad thing, by the way. <laughs> but it's just, it's not as specific. So the more specific we get, and this is really important if you guys are going to do this on your own and or access some of the videos I've made, um, that you really try to isolate as much as possible. And part of isolation means that you're not trying so hard. As soon as you try, you start recruiting other muscles to, into your practice, okay? So thank you, Tracy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Stand up. So is that something that we could actually apply to ourselves? Absolutely, we could. absolutely. We could just dig in there. Yeah. Well, I don't know about digging in there because you don't know exactly where to dig into. And then you're obviously not going to be as, again, specific. It would be much more, instead of you trying to palpate yourself, it would be more effective for you just to lie down and then do this practice, which we're going to do this morning. So don't worry. <laughs> OK, so you guys like that? Oh, how do you feel standing up? Good. You feel different? Yeah. Yes. And your lower back is tightening up because the glutes aren't working properly. They're not doing their job properly. So, so that's a little bit about that. Okay. Um, where I'd like you guys to go is come, uh, uh, let's come and sit. So let's start off and just sitting, sit comfortably. Actually, let's do a little experiment. <laughs> this is going off script, but I love experiments. I think experiments are really important. Um, <clears throat> just come and sit for a moment and just notice how you feel. Notice how the feeling or the sensation is in your glutes or your hips, in your core. Good. And then come and lie down onto your back. And as you're coming to lie down onto your back, uh, bend your knees. <clears throat> and then lift your, bring your arms out to the sides like a T or over your head along the floor and lift your hips up. So lift your hips up and then squeeze your glutes as much as you can. And then slowly come down. Now we're going to do more glute stuff in this practice, but I want you just to kind of 
start to tap into them for a moment and lift your, lift your hips up and then squeeze your glutes. Really kind of anchor into the heels, maybe even lift the toes off the floor just a little bit and then lift up a little higher and see if you can squeeze a little bit more and then slowly come down. And we'll just do it one more time. So lift up one more time and squeeze the glutes. And then slowly come down. Roll over to the side and then just come in and sit back up. And just notice that there's a difference. Notice how you feel. As soon as your support system becomes activated, does that change the way that you sit? I notice in my body, and it, again, it can be different in everybody's bodies depending on what you got going on, but I feel more support in my lower back right now. If I, before when I can't come and sit, I always feel like this pulling feeling, this pulling sensation. You might also notice that your knees can drop a little bit easier. Why do your knees drop? Because the muscle that's responsible for contracting to shorten the distance between the floor and your knees is your glutes. Okay, so just take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Let me just say a prayer to the guru of our tradition. Ganesha Graha Nakshatra Yogini Rashi Rupanim Devi Mantra Mahim Nami Matrikam Pita Rupanim Om Shanti 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 What we look to do in yoga, in the practice of yoga, is to awaken our inner teacher, to awaken the inner intelligence, the guiding light within us, and to remove the veil of confusion. It's worthwhile noting that confusion in yoga, in the yoga tradition, is synonymous with this idea of darkness, this heaviness of darkness. And in darkness, it's hard to find our way back. And as we bring light and awaken the inner intelligence of light, the inner teacher, that the darkness begins to dissipate. And so bring your hands to Namaste Mudra and just say your own silent prayer. May this practice remove the heaviness of confusion. May my inner teacher awaken. and dawn clarity, intention, and purpose. Namaste. Okay, so while we're here, we're gonna start with our first um, thing. So bring your hands to your shoulders and lift your elbows up as high as you can and you want a little bit of arch in the lumbar spine. So I want you to feel that arch. If you're not sitting on something, do sit on something because it's really hard to extend in the lumbar spine if you're kind of like low to the ground. So you really want to be up so you can feel the lumbar curve here. Lift up the elbows, keep the hands on your shoulders and just twist as much as you can to your right. Keep the length in your lumbar spine. Keep the length in your lumbar spine. Keep the hips grounded 
but also feeling that curve, the little dotted curve, come back to center, lift up again, extend in the lumbar spine, and then twist to your right again. Same side, same side. Twist to your right. Inhaling, exhaling, twisting deeply. And then come back and lift up again and twist again to your right. Same side. And come back to center. You might notice that as you're doing this, twist again, that you might notice as you're doing this that you can twist a little bit more each time. And so we're really using the musculature to do the twisting. Come back to center. And one last time, lift up, arch in the lumbar, and twist again to your right. And come back, and then just relax the hands. Close your eyes just for a moment. And just feeling the effects of the pose. And bring your hands back to the shoulders. Maybe go the opposite direction. So recross the arms the opposite way. Lift up the chest, and then twist to your left this time. Don't worry about how much you're twisting, but do kind of lift the chest and arch in the lumbar spine. Come back to center here. Ground the hips down. Squeeze the glutes a little bit. Press the, through the heels of the feet. Now lift up. Lift up and sit up as straight as you can and then twist to your left. You might have noticed that some of the brakes were put on the twist. You might not be able to twist so much further. Come back to center. And the reason for this, you want to feel like the hips are squeezing into the midline and then twist again to the left. Come back to center, lift up the chest, and then twist again. You might start to notice as well something starting to happen around the navel center or the midline, the aponeurosis. Come back to center, and then twist again. And come back to center, and last one, lift up, feel the arch in the lumbar spine, and then twist to your left. And then come back to center, relax the arms, just close your eyes. And take a deep breath. Breathing starts to trigger the parasympathetic response. Deep, long, diaphragmatic breaths start to have an effect on the parasympathetic nervous system, inducing that quality or that state of rest and digest. And in that state, we can start to create healing, to cultivate healing in our body. Very nice. Okay, so come um, onto the ground. You're gonna come and lie onto your back, please. <clears throat> and we're gonna do a couple of things here. So the first thing you're gonna do is, oh, and bring a block with you. <laughs> <clears throat> so one of the things that we're going to do first is you're going to bring a block in between your thighs. And I would encourage you to bring it up close. Don't have the block close to your knees. Have the block as, almost as close as you can. Maybe not right in there, but as close as you can to the groins. Bring the arms out to the sides. Pull the pubic bone up towards the navel point. And then inhale here. Now, keep the shoulders grounded down. Feel the shoulders grounding down. Inhale and exhale, slowly bring the knees over to the right halfway. No more than halfway. Even a little less than halfway is good. And just hold it there for a moment. Do you guys feel your core? Do you feel your abs? If you don't now, you will tomorrow. And then come back to center. 
and then exhale over to the other side. Halfway again. We're going to do this a few more times, but just hold it there for a moment. Pull the pubic bone up towards the navel center. Come back to center. And then again, over to the right. Now, as you bring them over to the right, again, a little less than halfway, squeeze the block. Don't squeeze the block so much that you're clenching your teeth, <laughs> but just creating some adduction. Come back to center and then over to the left. Again, pull the pubic bone up. There's a slight tension on the block with those adductors. Come back to center and then over to the right. And then maybe take your gaze over to your left hand. Again, don't let the knees come down more than halfway. Even a little less is better. Come back to center, inhale, and exhale over to the left, and then your gaze over towards your right hand. Come back to center, and exhale over to the right, and your gaze over to the left. And then come back to center. And then exhale over to the left and your gaze over to the right. And then come back to center. And then over to the right and your gaze over to your left. Okay, and then do it again on the other side. And this last one, we're gonna change it just a little bit more with the breath. Come back to center. Inhale here and exhale here. And then hold the breath out. Bring the knees over to the right and your gaze over to your left. And just hold the breath out there for a moment. And then come back to center. And then exhale here. Hold the breath out, knees to left, gaze to right, and just hold the breath out. Nice, and then come back to center. Let the feet come down, take the block out, and just relax for a moment. Keep the knees bent here, and just, but take a couple of deep breaths, and sometimes it's nice to bring the hands down to the pubic bone. Some of you might have been asking actually, where's my pubic bone? <laughs> if you follow the navel and go down the um, uh, upper neurosis to the pubic bone, that's the midline, and just kind of feel the pubic symphysis and then send a couple of deep breaths there. These deep belly breaths start to trigger that parasympathetic response that we're looking to cultivate. Very good, okay. So now bring your hands behind your head and we're gonna do this next one in three steps. So one, step one, bring your knees up. Step two, you're going to lift your head up. And then step three, pull the pubic bone towards the navel and you're gonna feel your lower abdominals contracting and then slowly come down. One, lift the knees up. Two, lift the head and chest. Three, pull the pubic bone towards the navel for one, two, three, four, five, six, and slowly come down. And one, lift the knees, two, the head, Three, pull the pubic bone towards the navel. And then slowly down. And then one, lift the knees, feet. Two, the head and shoulders. And then three, pull the pubic bone up. Two, three, four, five, six, and then slowly down. And then one, lift the feet, two, the head and shoulders, 
and three, pull the pubic bone up. And then slowly come down. And one, lift the feet, two, the head and shoulders, three, pull the pubic bone up. Let your mind come down to that pubic bone and start to visualize the muscles there shortening as you pull the pubic bone up. And then slowly bring the feet back down. Very good, okay. So from here, slowly bring your right foot, your right ankle across your left knee, like this. And then bring your left hand. If you're not sure which is your left hand, just wave it to yourself for a moment, say hello. And <laughs> bring that left hand, keep waving it, bring it to your right knee, in front of your right knee, good. Bring your right hand, find your navel center, and find the pubic bone, and then sort of come in the middle and just kind of poke in a little bit. Now, don't worry about anything yet, because now what you're going to do is you're going to press, keep the left arm straight, press the right knee into the left hand, and you should feel a muscle starting to contract. Okay, that's called your psoas. And then relax, don't move the body, just relax. Stop the contraction and do it again. And one, three, and five, and relax. And do it again. 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 And relax. Good. Bring the right foot down and then recross. Bring the left foot over towards the right ankle. Wave your right hand to yourself. Hello. I know it's funny, but it's true. <laughs> and bring that hand to the knee, to the opposite knee. So again, it's hand to opposite knee. And then bring your left hand and just kind of find or locate the navel and then locate your pubic bone and then press in and then start to press the left knee to the right hand for two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And then let the left foot come down. Okay, good, straighten the legs out. What we're going to do is a simple little thing just to kind of really get into the hip flexors. So bring the legs together, turn the toes out. Now, I want you to lift both legs up about 30 degrees, more or less. Now, if that's too much, just lower one leg and lift, keep one leg lifted and lower the other one to the ground. So you don't want to create more stress. If there's stress anywhere or you feel that something is really overcompensating, then just do one leg at a time and then slowly come all the way down. 
Don't drop the legs. Lower them really slowly to start building strength with eccentric contractions. Okay, and then slowly come back up and hold it there. And now squeeze the legs so there's a bit of adduction going on. We're talking sometimes about pelvic floor. As you squeeze the legs, this will create adduction and slowly lower down. And also thereby strengthening the pelvic floor. Squeeze the legs, lift back up 30 degrees. And slowly back down. Take a deep breath in, relax, and then squeeze the legs and lift back up. And then slowly back down. Again, if two legs is too much, just do one leg at a time. Squeeze and lift up. And slowly down. Relax and lift up. And slowly down. Very good. Bend the knees. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Very good. Okay. Slowly start to roll over to the side. And come on up to fours. Come on up to your hands and knees. Take a moment to feel your spine. There's probably a sense or a feeling that muscles are working, but there's also a feeling of stability and strength. As you breathe here, find the pubic bone. So even with your back in extension here, even though you're doing a bit of an extension, see if you can sense the pubic symphysis coming upwards through the midline as you breathe in and breathe out. Good. And then from here, inhale and exhale. Slowly lift the knees off the floor. Come into downward facing dog. And then with the breath, inhale very slowly. Bring the knees down to the floor. Lift the chest and heart. And exhale, come into downward facing dog. Inhale, come to hands and knees. Lift the chest and heart. Exhale, come into downward facing dog. Inhale, come to your hands and knees. Lift the chest and heart. And exhale to downward dog. Good. Bring the hands just a little wider and then rotate the hands in about 10 degrees. So if you look at your hands, just start to point them in just a little bit. Come into plank pose now. And as you're in plank, kind of squeeze the hands in towards the midline, not in a forceful way, but in an intentional way. Exhale, come back to downward dog. Inhale, come to plank pose, squeeze the hands into the midline. Now take the sides of the navel into the belly, into the navel, lift the chest a little bit, lift your chest, drop the hips a little bit, exhale, come into downward dog. Nice, inhale, do that again, come into plank, and exhale, downward dog. <clears throat> Inhale into plank and exhale, downward dog. Very good. Inhale into plank. Squeeze the belly, squeeze the belly. Strong legs, press back through the heels of your feet and then come into downward dog. One last time. Inhale, come into plank, press back through the heels. So imagine that there's a wall on your heels right now and you're pressing into that wall. You're bringing the chest forward, <clears throat> squeeze the navel into the sides of the belly into the midline and then exhale downward dog. Oh, isn't that lovely? Inhale, come to your knees and then just come down all the way to the floor. This is a nice pose. I call this, 
I call this pillow talk. <laughs> Tell me. Talk to me. <laughs> How do you guys feel? You guys feeling your body? Lit up. Yeah, but we haven't done anything. <laughs> we haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah, it's very specific. So kind of come over to the side and, <laughs> and bend your knees like this. Now <clears throat> take the upper hand and just place it just gently on the, on the outside of the thigh. I want you with this hand to put about like five to 10 pounds of pressure onto the side of the, the, the leg, okay, the side of the femur bone. And then very slowly lift that upper, the top knee, so this left knee up towards the ceiling. Keep the foot down on the, on the other foot. So it, one of the names for this is clamshells, kind of clamshells. So if you can lift up that knee as high as you can, but just pushing a little bit down with the hand, just a little bit, not too much. And then very slowly come back down. And then slowly come on up. as high as you can, and then slowly come on down. So if you guys just take a quick peekaboo peek at me, just for a second, and then you're just coming up as high as you can, okay? And I'm also just pressing a little bit with this hand, just a little bit, that's all, okay? And do, we'll just do it a couple more times. So do it again, come on up, as high as you can. And then squeeze, you can feel the glute squeezing a little bit. Where we're getting into specifically here, and slowly come on down, relax, and then come on back up. What we're doing here is we're kind of isolating two sets of muscles. One is the glute meds a little bit, and then also the piriformis, which is really responsible for hip rotation. And slowly come down. And then do it again. And then slowly come down. Good. And so now we're going to change sides. So flip over to the other side. And then again, let that upper knee up. Just kind of creating a little bit of resistance with the upper hand, obviously not too much. And just holding it there. You might have noticed a bit of a difference between the sides. <laughs> and slowly come down. Sometimes you'll notice like you'll actually feel the weakness in the other side in the second round or in the second side that you do. Lift it up and we're holding it there, isometrically holding it there, squeeze a little bit and then slowly come on down and then slowly come on up and then you notice sometimes it progressively getting easier and then slowly come down and then slowly up And slowly come down. And slowly up. And slowly down. And one more time. And then slowly up. And then slowly down. Very good. Okay. So come on to your bellies. <clears throat> and we're going to do a couple of things here. But the first thing we're going to do is what we did earlier in the demonstration. So there's two options. One, just let the hands rest here and let your forehead come down. Two, bring the hands sort of to sometimes what we call cobra hands. Okay. So a little under the shoulders. And bend one knee. Let's start with your right knee. And what I want you to do first, you can take one hand and just feel that glute. See if you can engage the glute. 
Now, as I'm doing it right now, I can also feel my hamstring engage. I want to try and isolate the glute from the hamstring. So I'm going to relax, and then I'm going to engage the glute, and my hamstring's now relaxed. <laughs> Once you kind of have that sense of engagement, then engage the glute and lift the leg up. Remember that we don't want to try and you know, go too far up because then we start to go into compensation. So maybe the first few rounds you're lifting, but just a little bit. So don't worry about how far you go up. Um, and then slowly come down. So do I flex my foot? I would say to have the intention of, so engage the glute, press the leg up, press through the heel of the foot, okay? Press up through the heel of the foot. Now, you can also take one of your other hands, your other hand, your left hand here. Just feel your lower back because you want to keep the lower back level and then slowly relax. Relax the leg. So feel the lower back, that the lower back is level here, that you're not like moving around so much in the hips. Bend the knee, engage the glute, lift it up. You might already start to notice it's getting easier. And then relax. And bend the knee, engage the glute, lift it up. And then relax down. And bend the knee, engage the glute, and lift up the leg. And relax down. And we'll do it one more time. Bend the knee, engage the glute, and then lift up the leg. And then relax down. Good. Change sides. So bend the left knee now. And let's first just engage the glute. So see if you can isolate the glute. Notice if you're engaging the hamstring, because sometimes there's a tendency to do that. So if you do that, relax the leg, bend the knee, and just do it a couple of times, just so you can start to feel that glute engage. But you've never had a yoga teacher tell you to fill yourself up so much. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm a tantric yoga teacher, baby. Okay, bend the knee, and then start to lift that leg up. We're going to hold it there. So each time we hold, just in case you haven't figured it out yet, it's six seconds. We hold about six seconds and then slowly relax the leg down. Good. Bend the knee, engage the glute, and lift it up. And then slowly relax and come down. Good. Bend the knee. Engage, lift up, two, three, four, five, six, and come down. And bend the knee, engage the glute, and lift up, two, three, four, five, six, and then down. And bend the knee, engage the glute, lift up. Two, three, four, five, six, and come on down and bend the knee, engage the glutes and lift up. Two, three, four, five, six, and relax down. And one more time, bend the knee, engage the glute, lift up. Two, three, four, five, Six, and then come on down. Very good. All righty. You guys feel this in your backs, by the way? Yeah, definitely. Come on to fours. <laughs> A lot of what we're doing in this practice today specifically is targeting the back muscles. Come back to fours, lift the chest and heart, tuck your toes, and then come into downward facing dog. 
<clears throat> and inhale, come back to fours. Do it a couple of times. And exhale, come into downward facing dog. And inhale, come to hands and knees, lift the chest and heart. And exhale, come into downward dog. Good. From here, just slowly, gently walk your hands to your feet. You can bend the knees here. Bring your hands to your hips. Take your belly in towards your spine. Extend the spine. Elongate the spine. And then just come forward. And then extend the spine. Take the navel deep into the spine the sides of the belly inwards into the midline, and then slowly start to come back up. Hmm. Sometimes it's nice, because we've been doing a lot of really deep work, to just kind of feel the difference in your body. Just take a walk or a step forward and a step back. And you might notice that there's a bit of a difference just in the way that you're holding your gait. There's more solid sometimes. Do you guys feel more solid? Yeah, open. It's interesting to note that a lot of times people, you know, they're complaining a lot about tightness. And tightness is a sign of muscle weakness. When we start to get a muscle functioning at its optimal way, which means that a muscle has the ability to contract properly. That's what a muscle's function is to do. Is muscles move bones, and part of the way that they move bones is through contraction. If they're not contracting properly, then there's no range of motion. And so people are always saying, I want to be looser. Well, you got to get your muscles working. <laughs> so bring your right foot forward and your left foot back. I'm going to do a couple of things here. You just relax the arms beside you, okay? And then very slowly, we'll do the first couple nice and slow, and then we'll move a little bit into it. So you want to square the hips as much as you can to the front foot. Lift up at the pubic bone as much as you can. Take your hand to the right glute or the outsides of the right glute and just kind of roll that down into the floor. <laughs> and then lift up. Good. Bend the right knee slowly, swing the arms forward, and come up into warrior one pose. And then exhale and come into it. So one of the things to be careful of here is, if you just want to look at me for a second, is not to do this. <laughs> you see my belly here? So you want to keep, the, again, the sides of the belly in. So inhale, come on up but also allowing that curve in the lumbar spine a bit while lifting up at the pubic bone. Exhale, slowly relax the arms down. Good. Let's do it three more times, but this time we'll add ohm into it. So inhale, bring the arms, reach up, bend the knee. And then exhale, come out of it with ohm. Om. Inhale, bring the arms, reach up. And om. So come on up into it again and just stay there and breathe a few breaths. Now keep lifting up. Feel like you're holding on to some ropes with your hands and you're pulling yourself up and you can feel the sides of the belly, the sides of the, the abdominal wall, the lateral obliques elongating as you reach up. Lift the front of your toes just for a moment. And then what we're going to do here is exhale, bend the elbows and lift the chest up towards the sky. Then inhale, keep the right knee bending here. 
reach back and exhale, squeeze the elbows down and turn the corners of your mouth upwards. Inhale, <laughs> reach up and exhale, squeeze. And then we'll stay here for two more breaths. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades together. This is activating the trapezius muscles, the middle and lower traps. Lift the chest up and now let your head start to drop back and then slowly come on out of it and step your back foot up to your front foot. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply. Inhale, feel your spine elongating the top of the head, rising upwards, exhaling, feeling grounded, but also spacious. Inhale, inhale, inhale into infinity. As you exhale, feel yourself dissolving into eternity. All right, so step your right foot back. <clears throat> okay, we'll do the first couple um, together or it's a little slower, but squeeze the hips into the midline as much as you can, okay? Lift the pubic bone up. Okay. It's not the same as tucking the tailbone. This action starts to actually stabilize the whole abdominal wall. It's a little muscle down here, very tiny muscle. It's about that big. It's called the pyramidalis. And no, I didn't make that up. <laughs> and it actually triggers the four major abdominal, ab abdominal muscles. Okay. So lifting up there, then inhale, slowly bend the left knee, reach up and feel spacious. And then exhale, slowly start to straighten the leg, let the hands come down. Inhale, open up, expand your awareness, expand your capacity, expand the breath, sides of the belly in. Exhale, slowly release, bring the hands down. Okay. We'll add ohm now. So inhale, bring the arms, reach up, lift up, and then expand it with ohm. Om. front knee, lift the arms up. Good. Now this time you stay in the pose, maybe lift the front toes off the floor. So you're really in the heel of the front foot and then let the so toes soften. Exhale, bend the elbows, come into cactus pose and expand the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Now inhale, Reach up and back with the hands. So you're expanding the back bend here, increasing the contractibility of the muscles. Exhale, bend the elbows. And lift the chest and heart. Lift the pubic bone, sides of the belly in. Inhale, reach up and back. Exhale, squeeze the elbows. And inhale, reach up and back. And then exhale, squeeze the elbows. We'll just stay here for a few extra breaths. So you go and work within your capacity. Lift the chest and heart, sides of the belly into midline. Lift up at the pubic bone. Both of the heels of the feet pressing down. See if you can dissolve a little bit more. And then slowly come back and bring the hands to Namaste Mudra.
All righty. Isn't that delicious? Do you guys like that, eh? We haven't done anything yet. We haven't done, we haven't done one chaturanga. Go figure. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, let's um, grab. Um, if you just have one block, uh, you can bring the block like this. If you do have two blocks, you can bring them like this. So either like this or two blocks like this. Bring your feet wide apart. <clears throat> and kind of look at your feet for a moment and draw an imaginary triangle from the feet to a point at the top of a triangle, okay? And that's where you're going to place your blocks, <clears throat> okay? So one of the poses that we actually started with was a twist. So twisting is just really amazing. Um, and uh, from an MAT perspective, they're also the most important muscles to um, any of the rotator muscles are the most important muscles to get activated. So here we want to really go slowly because we're using gravity and I don't, I want you to fight against, you know, falling forward, fight against the gravity, okay? So just keep that in mind, sides of the belly and if you're not sure where the sides of your belly are, bring your hands to the sides of your belly and squeeze them in. <laughs> Do you guys feel what happens when you do that? Like your core just zips it up. <laughs> bring the arms out to the sides, inhale, and then exhale. Bring the right hand down to the block. Keep looking down at the right hand as you lift your left hand up. Again, zip it up with the abdominals. Now inhale, take the left arm over the head and just gently take your gaze to your hand. Don't strain your neck, please. Exhale, bring the hand up to the sky and follow the hand if it's within your capacity. Inhale, come back up. Zip it up. Exhale, relax the hands down. So we're going to just incorporate a little bit of movement into the neck. Um, work within your capacity. If you feel strained, don't, don't go so far, okay? Because you can really hurt yourself. So inhale, bring the arms out. Exhale, zip it up, bring the left hand down to the blocks, right hand up. Inhale, take the arm over the head, reach and look up at the hand, and then exhale, follow that hand, but gent be gentle in your neck, please. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, relax the arms. Inhale, bring the arms out. And exhale, bring the right hand down and left hand up. Look down at your hand. Inhale, take the left arm over your head. Bring the gaze gently to your hand. And exhale, take the hand up. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, take the left arm down and right arm up. Inhale, take the arm over the head. And exhale, take the arm up. And follow the hand with your gaze. Inhale, come back up. We'll do it one more time each side. Exhale, take the right arm down. Inhale, take the arm over the head. Take your gaze gently to the hand. And then exhale, take the gaze up with the hand. And just stay there for two or three breaths. Squeeze the sides of the belly in. Elongate the chest, a little bit of an up dog in the chest. Squeeze the hips to the midline and press down through the outer edges of your feet. And then inhale back up. Exhale, relax the arms. Inhale, bring the arms out. And exhale, bring the hand down and the right hand reach up. Inhale, take the arm over the head. Take your gaze gently to your hand. Just be gentle again in the neck. And then inhale, or exhale, sorry, bring the hand up towards the sky and just stay there for about two or three more breaths. Push your leg bones back. Press down into the outer edges of the feet. Kind of create this up dog effect in the chest. This extension. And then inhale and slowly come back up. 
and then exhale. Just relax the arms. We're going to do one more pose here. I love this pose. It's very simple. Um, so bring, if you have two blocks, bring the blocks underneath your shoulders. If you just have one, just use the one and let the hands kind of rest on that block. But what I'd like you to do here is to focus more on creating extension in the lower, sorry, in the lower back and upper back. So really extend the spine as much as possible. And then we're just going to hold it here for a moment. But as we're holding it here, start to breathe in deeply into the belly, lift the toes up. And as you lift the toes, you're going to feel your thighs engage. Press down into the heels of the feet. Inhaling deeply. And exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Very good. And then inhale one more breath. Extend the spine. Can you maybe bend your knees a little bit, but then bring the hands to the waist, sides of the belly in as you come up with a flat back or elongated spine. And then just start to take the feet together or underneath the hips. And just pause. Just close your eyes for a moment and feel the breath rising through the spine. And exhale deeply. All right, so come on um, back down onto the floor. We're going to wrap this up with a couple more poses. So come and lie down, first of all. And as you lie down here, just kind of take your feet. And sometimes pose is called goddess pose. So just bring your feet into uh, goddess pose. And what I want you just to notice is a couple of things. One, do you, where do you feel tightness? Two, how far down do you sense your knees? Okay. And again, just be objective here. Like you're not trying to create an experience. You're just simply observing the experience you're having. So we're not per se looking to cultivate an experience. We're just seeing how our body is. Okay. So now bring the feet into bridge pose. It's kind of where we started in one of our experiments. You're going to bring your arms out to the sides or over your head. And lift your hips up as high as you can. And then hold it there. Now think about the sides of the glutes actually squeezing towards each other. So you can really feel the glutes contracting. Maybe lift the toes off the floor and then start to pull a little bit, not so much, but just a little bit of the heels towards your shoulders and then slowly come on down. And then lift back up and squeeze the glutes. Now, as you squeeze the glutes, you might notice that you can actually lift the hips up a little higher. And then you squeeze the glutes again. And then you, sometimes you can just inch it up a little bit and then slowly come down. And then do it again. And squeeze the glutes. <laughs> Oh, yes. And then come on down. Sometimes if you say that, oh, yes, it actually works a little bit. <laughs> and lift the hips up. And squeeze the glutes. And then see if you can lift up a little higher. 
and then slowly down. And jiggle your glutes a little bit and then lift them up. So remember I was talking earlier about coming into some of these things from a place that is relaxed, really relaxed. Because that's where we start to create the deepest change and then slowly come down. And one more time, slowly come on up. Lift up a little bit higher, squeeze in a little bit more. And then slowly down. Okay, bring your arms out to the sides. <clears throat> bring your feet back into that goddess pose stretch. Supta Baddha Kondasana. And does it feel different? Does it feel different? It's easier. It feels like there's more movement. In my body, when I first did it, it was like there was a pressure going on. Now there's no more pressure. It feels more natural, yeah. It's kind of lovely, eh? Okay, with the arms out to the sides, bring the knees back and squeeze the knees into the chest. Don't hold them there, please. Just squeeze them using your abdominal muscles and your quad muscles. Then bring the hands down to the floor beside your hips. And then you're going to inhale, raise the legs up to the sky and bring the arms over the head. And then exhale, squeeze the knees in and let the hands come back down beside your waist. And inhale, bring the arms reach up. As you straighten the legs up to the sky, exhale, bring the knees into the chest and the hands beside your waist. Inhale, bring the arms up as you straighten the legs, push up towards the sky. And exhale, bring the knees down, hands beside your waist. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Okay, keep your left knee into your chest, but straighten your right leg up to the sky. Now, slowly keep the left knee in your chest as you slowly lower the right leg down about three quarters of the way. So the foot is about, about one and a half feet, 30 degrees above the floor. And just hold it there. Squeeze the left knee in, push through the right heel. Slowly raise the right leg back up and then bring the right knee into the chest. Bring the left knee up to the sky and then slowly lower the left leg to about 30 degrees. And then slowly bring the leg back up, knee into the chest, and then the feet come down to the floor and straighten your legs out. And then relax your hands out. Now, one of the things that's really important is you just come into neutral. I know that so many instructors like to give direction on the space of the feet and this sort of thing. If you wanna know where you should be, just close your eyes, bring your hands to the ceiling and then let the hands come down beside your waist. Wherever they drop is your neutral. You know, you can kind of do the same thing with the feet. Bend the knees, bring the feet to kind of a bridge-esque kind of pose. Lift the hips up about one inch. Let the hips come back down and just straighten the legs. And wherever the legs end up is your neutral, is where your body just wants to be. And then from here, just slowly inhaling and exhaling. 
This pose called Shavasana is just a really nice pose to allow the whole sequence to be integrated. As you watch the breath rising and falling, you can see the navel moving away from the spine on inhalation and descending towards the spine on exhalation.
Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your nose. Feel your consciousness dripping back into your body through your breath. Bend one knee and then bend the other knee. And then very slowly start to roll over to the side. And then come and just sit up. Take your time. And as you're sitting, just take a moment to feel your body. Notice if there's any changes. Maybe you can re recollect how you were sitting at the very beginning of class and how you're sitting now. May these practices help to awaken our inner teacher, to lift the confusion of mind and dawn clarity, intention, and purpose. Namaste.